So first and first, Tommy, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much, Robin. I am. Um, yeah, it's a weird time uh, to be a musician right now, but uh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's uh, who, would, who would have seen this coming? Right? <laughs> Well, the interesting thing, uh, thing, and we can talk about this later maybe, but um, in terms of the previous album, you kind of, I, th I think that album was written about kind of the hectic time that we were gearing towards, and now it's, even, it's going in a stranger yeah. direction. So, so there's a lot of interesting things uh, we can talk about later. But first, I want to start with, um, do you remember the first, or the live performance that you went to, to see as a kid that had the biggest impact on you? Oh, that's an easy one. Um, I think I was 12 years old. And my mom took me to um, the Phantom of the Opera okay. play in, in Stockholm. And uh, I was just, uh, I, I didn't know what to expect, but I was totally blown away. Uh, it was, you know, the music, the the suspense of the story, the theatrical part of it, mm. everything just totally blew my, blew my mind, you know? Okay. And uh, that, that's probably what, it's pretty crazy, you know, given that we're, I'm in a band now where we use a lot of theatrics and it's kind of a little bit like, like that, but uh, yeah, it was, I remember it as, uh, as it was yesterday, you know, there's a scene in, in uh, the Phantom of the Opera where the, chandelier comes down for example like, or another scene where they where they um uh, looks like they're they're um paddling a a boat uh on this on the floor and, and it's, it looks like water and, and i was like totally mesmerized that i remember <laughs> okay oh, that's interesting so so at this point you say you were 12 and i know you you sang in uh, choirs when you were younger so were you already singing yourself at this point you know what? Yes and no. I have a lot of videos. Like, uh, I wasn't singing, thinking about being a singer, if that is what you're sure. Asking. But uh, I was singing, you know, I was in, this, in the choir, so to speak, in school, but I wasn't really a singer. I, wa I wasn't a singer <clears throat> until I maybe 17, 18, 19, when I started to, to uh, I don't know, develop more of an interest for music. Sure. And I mean, seeing uh, a theatrical play like uh, Phantom of the Opera, did, did it entice you to seek out the stage, so to say? Did, was that something you, you wanted for yourself, being on stage? No. And Not at all, actually. Okay. <laughs> it was never, <clears throat> it was never a, 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 I was never that kind of person either. Like, I wasn't uh, seeking uh attention or or that way because i didn't even, didn't even know you know i was mostly into sports and playing ice hockey and soccer and that was mo very much a team a team effort you know sure um and i was always a little bit uncomfortable in the spotlight that being said though i was in a, in a few plays in school as well where, where i got to act and that always was really fun so yeah maybe maybe it was there subconsciously does um does competence help with with uh confidence in a way because i i assume i mean i can start singing and then try to sing but i don't i don't have a good voice and i can't sing but so so when you were in those plays did it kind of did you get positive feedback and kind of did it did it give you some confidence that that was if if that was what you wanted to do you could i guess i mean uh, it's, it all started with uh, with I had a friend in my class at school that he was a really, he's a really great guitar player and he's one of my best friends, um, Johan Larsson. But he, he introduced me to this uh, guy called Stefan, Stefan Lindqvist. Uh, mm. Sorry, it's not Lindqvist. Stefan, I can't even remember his last <laughs> name at the moment. But um, Lindholm, sorry. Mm. sorry. Uh, and he had like a metal project that he was... Uh, writing and he, he didn't have a singer or anyone to, to write melodies or anything. And I just started listening a little bit to this kind of music. So, um, and, and I, I made a little, like a middle, made it like a one phrase on the song <clears throat> for a friend. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he kind of heard that and asked me if I wanted to do it. And I was like, 
sure, you know, I, I can try, I can give it a, a go. But um, so we did, we recorded seven songs or something on um, Stefan's stuff. And that was the beginning, you know, that, yeah. was, that was kind of like the first thing I did ever. Okay. Uh, what I find interesting is you, you say you, you weren't natural to the stage, so to say, but um, when I see now the, the footage of the live DVD and the uh, album that you're bringing out, you're very much comfortable on stage, it appears. So, so what have you learned over the years about being a frontman and being that center of attention in a way? Well, for me, it, it's important to be very well prepared. Mm. Like, I, like you said, if, if, you're, if you feel competent, it's easier to be confident. Mm. Um, and so I, I, I do a lot of, uh, I, I, I uh, exercise my voice, I exercise my body, and I, I, I kind of like even, you know, in the beginning I was, when I was getting into you know, the first couple of years of Camelot, for example, I, I, um, I would start a couple of months before a tour and to rehearse so you know so that i can know so i know that i know the lyrics i know that i i don't have to think about that aspect sure. and um, just try try to even when i'm practicing channel channel the live situation you know so sure. when i get to the live situation i've already done that a hundred times and is, is that, uh, does that include the, the theatrical elements? Because you, you do play with the audience in a way. And then, so is, is that something you can uh, rehearse or prepare for? Is that, or is, does that happen in the moment? It, it happens in the moment mostly, you know. And now, now we, uh, we've been playing so much, touring a, a lot over the years and played many shows. So it's like, it, it's there now, you know. But in the beginning, it, it, I had to kind of... Um, think about what I wanted to do do and what I wanted to to give to the audience. Mm. And I remember the first before the first show, before the first Camelot show ever that I that I was uh, uh, the main singer for mm. in Czech Republic, we had four or five days where we rehearsed, okay. you know, uh, in a, in Hanover. Uh, and that was really good because that's kind of that kind of laid the whole foundation to what we're doing still today. Okay. You know, but of course we're changing, changing things and, and adding things. But uh, yeah, that was kind of that was a really good school, so to say. So sure. to say, we had a stage set up. We we um, we didn't have an audience, but we kind of like went through all you know all the parts and you know what we could do and you know like a, like a like a play, you know, almost. And now you're releasing uh, the album uh, I Am The Empire, live from the O13 in uh, the Netherlands, in Tilburg. Um, so when you say, <coughs> sorry, when you say kind of we developed uh, the live show from, from that time in Hanover to, to where you are now, in essence, what for you are the, the most welcome changes to kind of that live performance and, and the show that you've created as a band? I think I think we're very much an interactive band, you know, like it's always something happening and, and it's always kind of an exchange of energy um, with the audience, which I really personally uh, feel that one of, that's one of our key elements, you know, mm -hmm. that, that we we can reach out a hand or we can, you know, look at people, point at people, make sure that people know that we know that they're there and that we appreciate them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that's the key to also why it's been so successful. Like, uh, I think people feel connected and um, feel that they've seen or, or been a part of something special when they leave every night, you know? And that's, I think that's our job, you know? And, and uh, for me, one of the most fun aspects of playing live. Here's, here's a thought, and then this is coming from a non-musician, so I don't know if this is a good question or not, but... Um... How do you kind of prevent uh, shows from be becoming routine in a way? Because I can imagine, like you say, you play a lot and then you have these uh, shows and different audiences all over the world and they might only see you once, for instance. So, so, so how do you keep things fresh and, and make that live performance as good as it can? Yeah, it, it's uh, sometimes, of course, you know, being on tour and you play every night, mm. uh, it, it can be 
you know, can be exhausting, for example. You can be tired mentally or not in, not in the mood sometimes during the day. Mm. But then I feel like it's, and it's the same for, for uh, I would, I think I can speak for all the guys, that once that intro starts, you know, you're just like, whatever happened during the day or it's just gone. And then you just, and, and, you know, it's easier now to be in the moment, you know, the further down the line I am, mm. I feel like it's easier to be in the moment and just enjoy what's ever, whatever is happening. Cause it is, it's very, it can be very daunting if you're not in the, in the mood, you know? Sure. And I, I think I struggled with that a couple of times, you know, in the beginning, but uh, now I feel like it's easier to just like the people are here, they bought tickets, they're ready to go. Like it just, it just fires me up as well, you know, every night and whatever happens, it's basically so that, you know, when the intro starts, then my memory is just like <laughs> go on. And then I, I come out the other side on the, at the end and I'm like, you know, like a roller coaster almost. Kind of what, what happened? What just happened? Yeah, what, kind of ha what happened here? But, uh, and I, and I like that because it's then it's all all in the moment, you know. Mm. And so, so for this particular night, I, I wrote down the date, but I can't uh, find it now. Uh, but but this particular night, what, what what do you remember, kind of in the preparation for that night? And because it's a DVD, I assume it's going to be a little bit different. Yeah, I mean, there was there's no doubt about it. Everyone was a little bit nervous about it because it's one night and one night only. And then you, you have one shot at it. But um, yeah, I remember we we met in Bochum and rehearsed a few of the new songs, like uh, Burns and Brace, for example, and, and songs that we didn't play live before. Um, and then we had the venue, o O13, we had it um, the day before the, sh uh, the okay. shooting of the DVD. Uh, to just kind of go over some of the songs, but mostly just make the setting, you know, make the setting right and, you know, be comfortable with being where everything is. And because mm. um, we had a lot of guests and uh, we, we, we didn't have a lot of time to re rehearse with them where they're coming in, when they're coming in, how to interact. And so, so we kind of relied on our um, previous experiences with these people. But so it was all a little bit loose, but in a, in a good way, I guess, because then it keeps you like on your toes and keeps you, you know, there. But uh, one thing that I remember is that uh, we basically didn't have time to, to rehearse with Charlotte. Uh -huh. uh, we had one, one, uh, like one moment where we actually went through the song, but it was the same day as we, as the DVD was going to be shot so it was like during this i think we had a six hour sound check or something okay uh and uh so uh yeah it was it was a long that day was a very long day it was just like oh, my, my mom was exploding with, with, with everything but uh we we rehearsed that song a little bit like a little half and half because we didn't want to blow out the steam for the show mm. so playing that when people see that played on the DVD, that's actually the first time we all go full, full okay. force into it and and uh, just hoping for the best, basically. <laughs> but I suppose those are the magic moments, right? The, the, the ones you don't really prepare for and then just that happen on stage. So are there moments in the show, or and, and doesn't have to be this show in particular, but that you look forward to certain songs or certain uh, yeah sections of the show? Yeah, I mean, um, as if you, you've seen the live DVD, so uh, there's a moment in there where I'm standing in the middle of the crowd, for example. I was really looking forward to that part. Okay. You know, like, uh, kind of the surprise of showing up somewhere else and and uh, just being in that ocean of light that was just uh, magical, I think, mm. for me. And it was kind of hard to not get emotional there. But, um, yeah. Well, so I look forward mostly. I have been telling other people too. I, I look for, forward to the first song okay. uh, of the night because it's it gives you such a, a feeling of energy when when you 
go walk on stage and you see all these people and uh, you, you, you just, it's like a release of energy, you know, people are like, ah, oh, finally, you know, and let's go. So that's, that's what I'm looking forward to, you know, just entering stage for the first song and just mm -hmm. seeing all the people. And that's an interesting thing because when you're younger and you kind of think about uh, playing music and, and that kind of stuff, you don't imagine standing in front of a sea of people and then singing and everything. So once kind of you got to that point and like say you almost get a little bit emotional getting uh, that close to the audience, uh, what is that realize, realization done for you knowing that people can connect to what you do, that they, they find something in the music that you guys make? Uh, and then especially thinking back of where you started from, where, where to make that transition in a way. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's the power of music, I think, you know, like that's when I feel the power of music, mm. you know. Uh, you don't think about that when you're, when you're sitting writing songs and, you know, you, you can only relate to yourself. Like, and, and it's, very, it's a very small bubble when you're writing, you know, it's like this, but then to see the extension of it when you're out playing live and that actually touches people the same way that you felt maybe or, or other uh, even other ways but that they um, that they feel something and get something from it it's just that's just crazy because that's not what you think about when you write sure. right but it's it's a it's the thing that makes you want to do it again so with the world being as it is now what is it like not being able to do that to, to have that connection and then feedback, direct yeah. feedback in a way. It's, it's a little like a, the isolation bubble, you know, like when is this going to end? Of course, it's one thought because uh, we, we all want to go uh, out playing again. You know, I, I think it was good for many people to, to have a break and just kind of like see what, what am I doing? What do I want to do? And maybe also, I can only speak for myself, but it's hard to, um, sorry, it is a yeah, little, like I can hear it. I don't know. Um, it's pretty crazy around here, actually. <laughs> where where are like, you? I'm in uh, Calgary. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's, we're right by a fire station here. So okay, it's like enough. all the time. But um, yeah, I'm sorry, what were we talking about there? Uh, no, well, just not being able to, to go out there and, and uh, get back yeah. to the people. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's, it, 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 for me, it was a, a well-needed break to just okay. be able to say like, okay, maybe I just take a little bit of time to do something else, you know, like be outside or, you know, do something else. It was good for me because right? I, I have a hard time doing that. But, if nothing, if this hasn't hadn't happened, I would have just, you know, steamrolled over everything. Yeah. Because it, is that difficult? And then this is, I, I suppose, quite general for, for touring musicians in, uh, in most ways, but um, is it difficult to take that step back when you're in it, in a way, to take that step back, look at, and, and, and the second part kind of, uh, what did you discover about yourself and how you want to approach what you do? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it is very, very hard for me. Uh, again, I can only speak for myself, but I, I, um, it was really hard for me to say, no, I, I can't do this or mm. I don't want to do that. Or and when you're in it, it's like a hamster wheel. You're just like, if I felt like I was just doing stuff all the time, even more than I okay. maybe could muster. So that's a, that's a lesson for me to say that maybe I am not my best self when I'm saying yes to everything. Mm. Uh, maybe I need to take some, some, a little bit of distance sometime. Uh, I find th throughout this quarantine situation that I've been, I've been more prone to go outside and work with my body more, and, you know, like chop wood or sure. carry heavy shit. <laughs> you, <laughs> know, enough, yeah. it, you know, that makes me very peaceful. And if I could have that more in my life, I would, I would definitely choose to. But do you, you mentioned fire station, so I just kind of, do you still work as a fireman? Is that still something you try to do every once in a while or? No, I can't. Uh, I, I had to stop this uh, last uh, Christmas, okay. basically. Like um, in the new year, I was, that was where the cutoff was. 
Right. Uh, because I, I um, yeah, I moved here to Canada and it's just not possible Fair enough, yeah. to, uh, to continue that. And, and, you know, who knows if I want to work as a firefighter here, but just not right now. Sure. Uh, it, it's been 20 years almost in the oh. fire brigade and uh, I feel pretty done. Okay. That way, right now, you know, it's been a lot of sleepless nights. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it is very physically active, right? So it's there is a, an element of that that you enjoy, I suppose. Of course, I, I love I love it still. It's mm. just that uh, it's not possible for me to do mm. two careers the way things are playing out right now. Sure. It was for a long time, but uh, I was also eating away at my, you know, my my only free time or my, sure. you know, it's always like I was coming back from a tour, went straight back to work uh, the, the morning after. And then maybe I had to record something after recording it during the night and then go to work in the morning. Like it was just too much. Uh, and I, I just couldn't do it anymore. Right. Well, getting back to the live uh, DVD, because you mentioned that there were uh, a couple of songs to learn. And now I've, I've written down uh, which album every of the song in the set is from. And, and, and is it a... Uh, well, let me ask, phrase it differently. What did you base the selection of, of, of those songs on? And is, is it very much like kind of your general life set or did you try to tinker with it a little bit? A lot of it was, was uh, like, because we wanted to give a picture, a snapshot of what Camelot is today. Uh, so and we are, we've been focusing on a lot of the new songs. Sure. Uh, and it's been going over really well, you know. And, uh, it, it's... You know, we, we, we don't play a song that we feel that it, there's no reaction to, for example, you know. So if, if there's a song we, you know, we feel, ah, maybe, maybe the crowd didn't react as much to, we, we switch it out to a song, a different song and try it. But for the live DVD, we want to give a, a snapshot of what Camelot has been since the live DVD, basically. Mm. Uh, and since I came to the, you know, into the band and... There's a lot of video songs, like I, I counted like almost 10, 11 video songs right. since that. Uh, so of course we wanted to play those. Uh, and that's, that's already like two thirds of the set almost. Sure. Yeah. So, and also, you know, we want to play new songs that maybe didn't, we didn't play on, on the, the first DVD. Mm. And then this is, uh, I don't know if this is correct. Um, but you, so you guys seem like a band who's, who's um, moved forward quite, quite well in, in terms of people accepting the new material. How do you see this? Uh, because some, I know some bands, they struggle with that, but where they're, they're, they've made a couple albums back in the 90s or, or something, and then they're living on that in a way. But you seem to be a band that's very much incorporating the new work and people appreciating it, appreciating it as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, that's very a very deliberate action you know like we we want to show we want to show people that this is an active this isn't a, a band that is uh, you know always pursuing new things always you know going for uh, to show something new with every album for example and we're not afraid to 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 highlight the new songs you know i think i think it's an important thing to to feel confident about the material as well mm. you know if we are confident about the material people will like it basically you know and um we 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 have been staying true to the nature of what camel has been though with a little involvement uh, and a little change but uh yeah so uh, you know giving it something new with every album is important but also staying true to to the kind of trademark sound that uh, always been there, you know, sure. and maybe the last couple, four or five albums at least, you know, mm. so people won't have a shock, you know, there will never be a shock, like what the hell is this music, you know, it will always have that touch and that mood with a little few swings to the, to, to the left or the right, you know. But the, and and the, well, the, the reason why I kind of, went this way because, because well, there's a couple of songs maybe four or five that that were from from before you joined the band so if, what is it like for you to sing those songs and especially there's one forever which is i think from 2001 so so uh yeah what is it like for you to sing those kind of songs where you weren't uh, uh there for the process in a way i enjoy it 
I, I really do because uh, it, it's also you know a, a lot, I know that the people love them, mm. you know, and it's a it's kind of a I don't know it's it, for me it was never about coming sweet like coming in just doing new songs. I don't want to sing the old songs. Mm. For me it was more honoring the past but giving something new to the future. Right. And and that was so for me it's just it's just a part of our of the band's legacy and it's, they're really great songs. I I have a, a lot of fun singing them. Hmm. Now two two uh questions I have to ask because uh, we are based in the Netherlands and uh so so the yeah. first one is why uh, no Dirty and Tilburg? Why why that venue for a live DVD? Well first and foremost it it's been I think it's been 10 or 11, 12 sold out shows in a row okay. for, for Camelot in Holland. So Holland was a, kind of a, you know, a go-to country for us in terms of the fan base and, and the reception and support. Right. Uh, and then it, it's always been a, you know, we, we've played uh, so many venues now and the, and the O13 has always been a, a really great place. You know, it's always been a very nice vibe, you know, we, mm. Uh, we were one of the first bands that played the O13 when it uh, got rebuilt mm -hmm. and opened up uh, to a bigger audience. So, also I was there um, uh, for the Arion DVDs back in 2017, I think it was. Yeah, um, and we we recorded a live DVD there with right. the same theme. So. Okay. Yeah, so that was also one of the reasons we chose the O13. Also, the last reason, uh, or one of the one of the, one of the one additional reason, reason why we chose uh, that uh, venue was it's easy, you know, it's really close to um, Amsterdam, which is a big hub for everyone. It's a lot of flights, uh, big airport, so it was it made it uh, possible for us to you know have people from all, all over the world uh, also have all the guests easily, uh, you know, the logistics were, were a little bit easier. Right. And then the second part of, the, of this uh, kind of Dutch <laughs> theme, uh, you mentioned Arian, and now uh, he's coming out with new music and you're singing on one of his songs as well. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. So, um, Yeah, that, and you've you've worked with him uh, in the past uh, uh, a bunch of times. So, so what what is your connection with with Aryan and and uh, yeah, what can you tell me about that song that you that you did with him? Oh, it's actually more than a so song. It's uh, oh, I, a yeah, I play the um, I play the main role of Dan Daniel in his the new album Transitus. Right. Uh, so it's going to be a couple of songs there. Where okay. I'm, I sing, but. Um, It's going to be mostly the way Arian always is, you know, like the bits and pieces in, in, in a lot of songs. It's not, it's maybe not always like a long song or so, but it's pieces. Sure. But uh, yeah, I, he approached me and asked me again for the third time in a row if I wanted to be on his album. So I, um, yeah, that was pretty cool. I, I, uh, I said yes, of course, and it's, I, I like him as a person a lot and as a musician, so it always feels feels uh, fun and like an honor, you know? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Final question then. Um, yeah, the, this this album was, uh, or this the show was uh, recorded in 2018, I believe. Um, so since then, you obviously have been busy. So, so what can people expect from Cam Camelot in the future? And how is this kind of, this strange time affecting what what you what you want to do yeah we're we're in a very fortunate position you know we have a live dvd coming out uh, in, the, in 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 a time where people need live music you know so the second best thing if you know instead of going to a show would be to have a live dvd of the of your favorite band you know so So we're we're lucky that we planned it this way. So now we can release an album and get some momentum uh, coming up in August here, and we're uh, working on the new album as we speak. You know, we're, we have 
a ton of ideas and, and uh, really have good momentum with, with writing the new stuff too, which I think is going to be a killer. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm really happy with that, with the, uh, those songs and that music that we're working on right now. Uh, so, yeah, sometime next year, we're going to have a new Camelot album. Okay. Well, one last thought then, because you mentioned kind of uh, live DVDs being the second best thing. It, once all the shows open up again, if you, and if you could choose of any band still playing, uh, which live show would you most like to go and see once we can go back to shows again? Yeah, I, I would be really, I haven't seen them yet, but I would like to see them at some point. Uh, I would like to see a Muse concert. Yeah. Why me? Oh, I, th I just think they're very innovative. And, um, you know, they, they do a lot of theatrical things and, and have a lot of just stuff happening on stage and a lot of screens, a lot of, you know, they're very forward thinking mm. when it comes to the live performance. And uh, I've just seen, you know, of course, YouTube clips or... Sure. But it looks... It, it's just um, they take it to another level, mm. and I think we're. I think a lot of bands can learn from. You know, it, it's 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 just cool, you know. And um, I like and I really like the music as well. Fair so, enough. All right, yeah. Tommy, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to talk with me. Um, I hope you have a great day. Uh, the rest yeah, of thank you. I don't, you I don't know what time it is over there. <laughs> it's probably very uh, early, isn't it? It's eleven thirty a.m. Yeah, fair enough. All right, hope, I hope you have a good day and uh, yeah, good luck with the album. I hope you can get to be on stage again soon. Yeah, I hope so too. Thank you so much, Robin. All right, have a good day. You too. Cheers.